Welcome my Hebrews and Shebrews. This is the Oilfield Disciple and Cruising with Jesus channel on YouTube. I want to welcome all the new subscribers that I woke up to this morning and I want to give praise and honor to Yahweh first and foremost. I've been praying for a little bit of encouragement thinking you know maybe my words just just ain't going nowhere you know and I feel that the Holy Spirit leads me to give a whole lot of information out and break down some of these strongholds that the uh, some of these wicked deceiving pastors uh, have been throwing out for several years of this prosperity gospel and uh, what God will do for you and when you go to these churches and give your tithes to these mega churches and multi-million dollar organizations that are wicked deceivers and that's part of what uh, my messages are uh, all through my videos I want to thank Yahweh first and foremost, but also got to give a big shout out to my brother, Brother Bear at uh, Bear Independent. Um, he kind of was the catalyst that, that instilled this uh, great jump in numbers in my subscription subscribers. Uh, first, I want to let you know I'm not into numbers. I'm not into, uh, you know, uh, titles and platforms. Uh, I simply want to give the Word of God as it reads in the text um, and my little bit of commentary as I understand it. Um, so that's what this channel is about. Now, Cruising with Jesus, uh, everybody that I know and they have great videos and I love them, I just wanted to do something different and my job instills and requires me to drive about 200 miles a day on dirt roads checking oil field leases and engage in production and, and letting the office know how much money they've made today. And um, in between there, I have time to shoot a video. So cruising with Jesus and the way I spell crew is, is um, we're supposed to be one, one in unity. And I'm gonna get to that here in a minute. And so what I thought we'd do since I'm getting some bits, getting some more subscribers is I wanna be diligent to that um, and give that honor uh, to those who have uh, I've stepped up and said, I'll just, I'll subscribe and check out, see what this guy has. Um, I'll do a daily reading of either Psalms or Proverbs. And today, I always read one proverb a day. Uh, my daily reading plan, um, I'm submitted to 10 chapters of the Bible a day. And that's three chapters of the Old Testament, three chapters of the New Testament, uh, three Psalms and one Proverbs. It's called the 10 Club. It's something that, um, a program that I was in when I first started uh, going to church and and laying down alcohol and because uh, I was a major alcoholic about six years ago and I've been five years about five and a half years clean now uh, and since then God has brought me into the teaching role I taught uh, men's Bible study for about three years then we co-mingled men and the women for the last year uh, and since then my pastor of our church has stepped down and now I've been I've been called to be the new pastor at our church um, what I want to do is lay out the truth because see there's certain things that I, I no longer walk in in the world um, and in Leviticus it, it, it tells us to um, eat certain things and not eat certain things well as I begin to submit myself to that um, a lot of people was negative towards that they're like you don't have to do that no more Jesus nailed that to the cross no he did not uh, no he did not now I'm not um, condemned under the law no more that's the freedom that I have I have the grace that whenever I stumble Christ has covered me through the bloodshed but just because I've been um, I've been given the opportunity to sin and and ask for forgiveness and be um, forgiven of that and redeemed doesn't give me the ticket and the ride to go and continue to walk in sin that God says is sin it was sin in the beginning and it's sin now and it'll be sin tomorrow um, before Moses took the law and wrote the law down, there was still the law. If you go back and read Job, you'll see that. Noah, you'll see that. Clean and unclean animals, uh, that was before Moses. So there was a law there. we got to understand that. See, we don't want to read this entire book. We don't. We want to read the good stuff and sharpie out the stuff that convicts us. Uh, just like the Pharisees when they stuck their fingers in their ears. Um, because it convicted them. Well, that's what it does to us. When we read this word on a daily basis, it should convict you. And if it don't, then something's wrong and you need to pray about that. 
Um, so that's what I do with this channel, and I appreciate all the new subscribers, and I just want to, I, I want to give this thanks out. And so we're going to read something that changed my life five and a half years ago that I went, whoa, I may be doing this wrong. I was a diehard three percenter constitutionalist that was ready to take up arms to defend the Constitution of the United States. I'm still, um, I still believe in the Constitution, don't get me wrong. I still believe in, in America uh, repenting of her sins and hopefully God forgiving her. Um, as we see right now, um, I believe Romans 128 where he says he will give them over to a reprobate mind or a debased mind. Um, we see that in our leaders today they, in, in the far left. Um, some of the things that is said by them, it just blows my mind. I'm like, wow, that's got to be a debased mind. That's the first judgment. The second judgment, God is going to use a more wicked um, nation to overcome us. That's the second. That's the second. Um, that is the second um, judgment that God is going to pass upon America if we don't repent. And we're killing babies at a rate, a phenomenal rate in the mother's womb right now. And I am, I'm highly against that. Um, I believe if we could just repent of that, God would give us a small reprieve. There's many things we need to repent of, but that's first and foremost. Um, that's part of my fight as a pastor and a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, um, I don't want to get this video too long because I know people's um, uh, mindset is, you know, if I look at a video and it says it's 44 minutes long, I, I may not watch it. I don't have time for that. Um, I do in my job, that's what I do, I drive around all day and I listen to videos of, of men that are of the same mind. Let me read this real quick to you so I don't get too far off here. Um, sorry, i got to take me a drink. Um, Psalms 91, the very first verse is what changed my mind. It's what got me thinking. Psalms 91, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, who abides under the shadow of the Almighty. What? Where is the secret place of the Most High? I don't know. I need to go figure that out, right? So I spent about six months trying to figure out who and I, where am I going to find this secret place of the Most High? This don't make no sense. That's when I entered that, I entered what was called Cool Life, the recovery program, and that's where the 10 Club came in. I realized the secret place of the Most High is getting in this Word every day getting a relationship with our Father through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Um, and make no mistake, God is one, okay? Um, Deuteronomy 6, 4, or 4, 6. Um, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Okay, so, Shema Israel, Elohim, 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 Echad. Right. We're supposed to write that on the doorposts of our, our, our dwelling places. We're supposed to write that on the, the gates of our homes. Um, that is supposed to be something that we we grasp onto. And, and part of that is his law, his word, of what he's telling us. So as I begin doing that, that's where the secret place of the Most High is. I'm going to dwell right there that no matter what's going on in life, God has this. He is sovereign. Nothing I can do to change that. Look at Joshua. You know, his brothers tried to, uh, or not Joshua, sorry, Joseph. His brothers tried to um, derail the, the things that God had planned for him. By doing that, they played right into the hands of God. Um, so we cannot operate outside of God's sovereignty. He is sovereign over us. Um, may not like that. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You have to deal with that with God. Verse 2, he says, Saying of you, saying of Yahweh, my refuge, my stronghold, my Elohim in whom I trust. For he delivers you from the snare of the trapper and for the destructive pestilence. He covers you with his pinion and under his wings you take refuge. His truth is a shield and armor. Man, his truth is a shield and an armor. We can, we've got to get a grasp on that. The shield and the armor. That's part of Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. That we do not fight against each other. We fight against the principalities of darkness of the wicked places in the spiritual realm. Um, what the devil dangles in front of us to make us walk outside of God. Uh, Baal worshiping, like I was talking about in the previous video. Baal is everything in the world that looks great to us, that would take us away from God. 
you know, um, do I have a choice to go to church or do I go fishing? Um, well, God says, go and be with other like-minded believers. I'm sorry. Um, so, your shield and your, your armor. Get it on, keep it on. Where did I lose you at here? Verse 5 says, You are not afraid of the dread by night, of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, of destruction that ravages at midday. A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it does not come near you. Only with your eyes you look on and see the reward of the wrong ones, because you have made Yahweh my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. Is, do, is, is God consuming Yahweh? Is he, does He consume your thoughts? Do you constantly think and, 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 and look back at your life and go, I didn't do nothing for the kingdom yesterday. I didn't do nothing for the kingdom today. I was too busy in my world. And all of these darts and arrows have been flying at me. I had a flat tire. I spilt my coffee. It's just a terrible day and it's all the devil's fault. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's God trying to test you. Sometimes it's God trying to get your attention um, by the small voice. Uh, but we want to give credit and due to the devil. Let me tell you something. If you're going out and you're making a big impact for God and the kingdom, the devil probably messing with you. If you ain't, man, don't set yourself up on a high platform. He ain't messing with you. You're doing right what he wants you to do. Go back to Matthew 7, 23, when God, when Jesus says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Iniquity is sinning on purpose. It's a sin in the heart that you like. The transgression of the law is tripping over the law and not realizing it. That's the two differences that we've got to get an understanding of. Okay? Because you have made Yahweh my refuge, the most high, your dwelling place. Verse 10, no evil will befall you, and the plague does not come near your tent, for he commands his messengers concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the, lung, the, the young lion and the serpent you trample underfoot. Okay, no evil befalls you. We gotta look at that. And we gotta understand that um, certain statements in the Bible is not what we think. We go back to Isaiah 55, 8 through 12, that our thoughts are not His thoughts; our ways are not His ways. Um, his word will go out and accomplish what it was sent to do, and not return to Him void. Isaiah 58 or 55, 8 through 12. Um, get acquainted with that one. This video is gonna get a little long. I can already see it. Um, we got to understand the difference between evil and, and good. In Isaiah 45, God creates the evil, right? That's what he says. God created everything. He created the good and he created the evil. Um, you know what? This is going to be a video for another time. Y'all think on that one, on how the evil comes at you. You'll tread it under your foot. Okay, we got to go into the spiritual thinking to get there, though. we got to walk in the spirit. we got to be of the spiritual mind um, in that. And back to Ephesians uh, 10 through 20. Verse 14, Because he cleaved to me in love, therefore I'll deliver him. I'll set him on high, because he's known my name. Hmm, I know God. I know who I'm walking with. I know, who I, I know who controls my life. When he calls on me, I'll answer him. I am with him in distress. When he calls on me, I'll answer him. Here's a big deal, guys. I see it all the time on Facebook. Uh, my brother's in, he's, he had a wreck, and, and I need y'all to pray for him. Okay, first of all, yesterday you were showing basically porn pictures on, on Facebook and talking dirty and nasty. You're not walking with God. God's not hearing your prayers. He'll hear your prayer if you ask him to deliver you and come to him. Uh, but you're not going to hear your prayers. I'm going to show you one other one right here, here in just a second. We're going to flip over to another another um, script. Let me finish this. But keep that. When he calls on me, I'll answer him. I am with him in distress, and I deliver him and glorify him. My Bible says esteem him. With long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my deliverance. Okay. Long life. That spiritual minded, I'm, I'm going to go into the kingdom with God. I'm going to spend eternity in glory with Him because He has delivered me and redeemed me through the blood 
and I'm not making light of that. So, back to he hears my voice when he calls on my name. If you would flip over to 1 Peter chapter 3, starting verse 7, it says, In the same way, husbands, live understandingly together, giving respect to your wife as to the weaker vessel, and as a being, heirs together a favor of life, so that your prayers are not hindered. To sum it up, let all of you be like-minded, sympathetic, loving as brothers, and tender-hearted, humble-minded. Okay. First of all, my wife is not weak. None of your wives are weak if they are godly women. Um, that word weak is just... Um, oh, I had it in my head and I kind of lost my, my way here. Um, weaker vessel. I don't think of my wife as weaker because if I go back and look what help me means, she's actually my protector. She walks around me in a 360 degree circle all the time protecting me from the sides and the back. I'm leading. I am the head of my home, but my wife is the backbone. Okay, get that. As I lead, my wife is, is always looking out for me. She's like, hey, we got electric bill due. Hey, we got this guy over here. He's doing this. Um, you know, she is doing the things. I am to guard her. I am to protect her and to guard her. She's to guard me and protect me too. That's the help me. That's the, the cohesion that God, that Jesus says in, uh, I think it's Matthew 19:5 that what God put together let no man separate it's not only a statement but it's a warning um, sorry guys I know this video is getting long man I, I, I get I get trumped up with with the Word of God and I want y'all to understand that whenever I make a video and speak I want y'all to go and think for yourself I want you to go look it up for yourself. Don't just take some guys telling you something. It sounds good, and it's even biblical, but go look it up because it may put you on another path that God needs you to go look and understand. We've got to read His Word daily. I'm so stoked, you know. Um, you guys, I went from nine subscribers for, I've had this channel up for, I think since a little before Christmas um, last year. Nine subscribers and this morning I woke up 35 in comments on my videos and I'm like whoa check it out you know I just want to walk with God and I want to everything that he gives me I want to give it back out to you some things he's got to step on my toes and I got to be like no I'm, I'm not doing that um, but as I walk with him it gets a little easier when he tells me to do something that is totally out of the realm of what we're used to and if you'll do the same you'll get the same results um, I definitely want to just thank you, Bear. Um, I really feel spiritually that me and Bear have, a, have the same mindset as I listen to him and how him and his wife have, have walked into uh, their homesteading and what they're doing. And I really love his channel. Uh, I try to watch every video he's got. Um, pretty sure most of my scribers come from him so um, you know you guys know what he's about bear thank you thank you much but y'all uh, I praise y'all on this I praise him with all I got and I need y'all to praise him with all you got he already sacrificed and redeemed and give you what you need that's redemption don't make light of the grace the grace is not for it's not a get out of jail free card for you to go act foolish and if you'll go back and look at my previous videos, go back to the very start. I think, I, I don't know how many videos, it's probably about, it's between 40 and 50 videos I have already out. Um, that I knew one day, you know, God, God promised me um, just to walk in truth and it would go according to Him. Okay, 35 subscribers to, mo to most YouTube channels are like, that ain't nothing. You know what? If you can't preach to one, you can't preach to a million bet that um, so most of my videos are pointing down the road um, I am actually on days off today I don't have to work um, so I've just been reading I read the whole I read the whole book of first Kings and second Kings today man there's some cool stuff in there Elijah and Elisha I, man I just can't get over them too um, I'll make more videos and I'll be more diligent to a daily video giving y'all daily bread um, y'all stick with me and, and I promise you as it says down here, you will be tender-hearted and humble-minded. Um, Like-minded. 
that's where we have to get. Um, if we're going to have this nation repent, we need a group of people becoming like-minded. And um, I see some changing. I see some turning. Um, but it all has to be according to this word. If it ain't about God, if it ain't with God, if it ain't in God, man, you're out of God. And you're either with God or you're against Him. You're either hot and cold or you lukewarm, out you go, man. I don't want to be spewed out of God's mouth, and I don't want none of y'all to be spewed out of His mouth either. You may not like what I have to say sometimes, but you go look in the Bible, you're not going to refute what I say. I may misspeak sometimes and misspeak a verse or, or, or a chapter. I'll, I'll review my video, and, and I'll, uh, I'll fix it on the next video that I make. That way that y'all know that I'm not just feeding y'all the line of bull. So I hope this message will bless you, encourage you, and most of all, even frustrate you. So you'll go look this up to try to say, uh-uh, that dude's wrong. Do it, please. And bring it to me if you think I'm wrong. We'll discuss it. You know, I'm not above uh, reproach. I'm not above um, correction. Uh, I believe none of us are. But if it ain't biblical, you know, hey, it is what it is. So y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and be frustrated. Um, this is the Oilfield Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next ride.